Our student speaker today is Mrs. Candace Grouse, a native of Ohio. She is a wife and mother of one daughter. Candace loves to read, write, and travel with her family. Currently, Candace works part-time in the communications department and is a member of the TCC student blog team. Candace is the recipient of numerous awards, and I will name a few. She is the vice president of the Honors Club, the 2010-2011 recipient of the Honors Program Achievement Scholarship. She is a member of Phi Theta Kappa, the International Honor Society for Community Colleges, where she has distinguished herself there. In 2012, she was one of Phi Theta Kappa's Coca-Cola Community College Academic Team Scholars. She was honored as a gold scholar. She was also a Phi Theta Kappa All Florida Academic Team Member for the first team. In 2011, she was a recipient of the Dr. Mary Pankowski Returning Student Scholarship. And again in 2012, she was honored by being the Women's History Month Student Honoree. In addition to her merit and service honors, Candace will graduate with honors on the President's List with a perfect 4.0 grade point average. Candace will transfer to Florida State University this summer, where she will major in English with a career goal in communications and social media. I present to you Candace Grouse. Thank you, Vice President Jefferson, trustees, President Myrtle, faculty, friends, and to the reason we celebrate here tonight, TCC Class of 2012. As much as the next person, I'm a big fan of short, perfectly worded phrases that cleverly express the deeper meanings of life. Every man dies, not every man really lives. It's not the length of life, but the depth of life. Happiness is a direction, not a place. This could be because I'm an English major with a passion for good words, or because I work in the social media in the TCC's communication office, a job which necessitates brevity with impact. Or it could be just because as a full-time wife, mom, student, and employee, I simply don't have the time for long-winded explanations about the nature of our existence. It is, after all, somewhat difficult to be overly philosophical when I spend much of my time between classes and homework debating with my daughter the merits of Jell-O over applesauce or who would win in a fight, Optimus Prime or Batman. It would be Batman, of course. But today isn't about me, and the last thing I want to do is stand up here for the next several minutes reading off cliché, Confucius-like quotes about hard work and success and all the other things one is supposed to talk about during these speeches that you already heard about back in high school graduation. How boring. If you don't mind, I'd rather talk about you. I know what you all are probably feeling right now. Confidence, optimism, pride, perhaps more than an a little anxiety, yeah? We are all about to join the elite ranks of the college educated who grace this world with their skills, their talent, their knowledge, and their all-around awesomeness. You should be excited and proud. But I know what is also on your mind because it is also on mine. Outside these doors lies a world thick with doubt and insecurity. Everywhere we look these days, we are being reminded about the dismal economy, the looming national debt, the bloated unemployment rates, the deficiencies in leadership, turmoil and conflict, corruption and greed, and how it is all somehow our fault because we were lazy and went to school instead of the workforce. By the way, whoever said that has never had a sick kid during finals week in their life. Yes, leaving here tonight, we will become one of the millions of other disparaged college graduates out there who are either clamoring for a job they may or may not really want with a hundred other applicants, or trying to get into yet another school that is in turn either raising tuition or denying admittance to anyone with less than a 4.1 GPA, a full list of extracurriculars, and 23 hours of community service logged per day for the last five years. 
You're still excited, right? I'm excited. Well, I've got some good news for you tonight. First of all, we are graduating from Tallahassee Community College. That means we were the smart ones. Not only did we choose to better ourselves and our world through education, we did it at a college that stands on the principle that every person should have access to an affordable education. Congrats on that wise decision. Yes, most of you, like me, still probably have student loans, but they aren't nearly as painful to look at as our university counterparts. It's our little way of sticking it to the man. Second of all, and this is the important one, you will change the world. Let me repeat that. You will change the world. Regardless of where you've been or how long it took to get you here, tomorrow is the first day of the rest of your lives. You will go out into the world and make a positive difference, no matter how big or small it may be. It's not an if or a maybe. Our burden and our advantage is that we do not have a choice. Let me explain. I'm an avid reader, and one of my favorite authors is Jeff Jarvis, who described this period in his book, Public Parts. He called it a reformation. He said, society splinters and splits and then reshapes in new forms. Think, think of us as atoms and molecules. We atomize, we reform into new molecules. We don't evolve so much as we blow up in wrenching bursts of violence, breaking strong old bonds, and forcing us to feel disconnected until we can connect again. That is what's happening today. You see, we're not a generation of naive young children. We are the opposite. We were thrown headlong into the world of adulthood. I know I'm not the only one here tonight who juggles parenting, a marriage, uh, going to school full time, two jobs. Life is already a challenge. And we have come into our own in a nation at war and a society divided. Much like those who grew up during the Great Depression or World War II, we've unceremoniously been given a hot mess to deal with. Fortunately, we are leaders. That's why we went to college. We wanted to become better people who can be successful and make a difference. During my intro to business class last week, Ms. Strickland was showing a video of public speaker John Addison who said, great leaders don't accept adversity. They don't manage adversity. They embrace adversity. Challenging times are what leaders want, as it were. As I'm sure you learned in Western Civ, two great and famous leaders emerged during the Great Depression and World War II. Winston Churchill was 65 when he became prime minister, despite a less than stellar political career. He is now regarded as one of the greatest leaders of the last century. Across the ocean, Franklin Roosevelt almost single-handedly renewed American national spirit with his endless optimism and leadership. And while battling his paralytic illness, he led our country out of the Great Depression and, in, and through the next World War. Both of these men were lighthouses in the storm, standing firm upon the rocks and leading their people out of darkness to a better future for all. I believe the next Churchill or Roosevelt is in this room. I know it because I've met you all. You are my fellow classmates, my friends, my family. We've shared pencils and calculators and our love of learning together. We've crammed for tests and discussed philosophy and attended campus events together. We have learned and forgotten more things than the average person will know in their entire lifetime. I know that collectively, you have had more than 5,000 great and impossible ideas that would shake our society down to its foundations. Is there any honors, Peace Jam folks out there? I'm looking at you, my friends. And because of all these things we've done together and what I know about you, I also know that when we are done with it, this world will be a better place. As Archimedes said, give me a leader, lever long enough and a fulcrum on which to place it and I shall move the world. Our lever is our vision. Our fulcrum is our education. We shall move this world. We've seen what it has to offer and we find it lacking. And since we cannot change our past, we will change our future. We are the reformers. We may have all started at TCC, but from here we will go anywhere, change anything.
What better place than here? What better time than now, as they say? As college graduates, we are now set on our path to success. The world is waiting at our feet for us to pick it up, dust it off, and reshape it in our own image. The only question is, how will we reshape it? Congratulations, class of 2012, and thank you.